to confirm your your uh, admission so that is like first of june is your, is the first deadline that you need to take care of where uh, you will uh, get an email from the contact center uh, that you need to confirm your acceptance, uh, a yes or a no, basically. And after that, you proceed to punch a letter uh, where you need to uh, kind of define, uh, you get information about uh, what is the financial aspect that uh, needs to be considered in terms of fee payment or first year lens. Uh, For uh, the submission of that is 1st of July. Um, it can be personal on a bank basis uh, or educational loan from um, uh, being provided by the same bank uh, on itself or some other funding uh, platform that varies from person to person. Um, the tuition fees and housing is uh, what is being uh, covered in the uh, statement of the financial letter. And the most important thing that is the withdrawal date. So uh, it needs to be sorted by 31st of August in order to fulfill your enrollment process. So I give the platform to my colleague, Ved, to continue with. All right. Uh, thanks, Maitri, for covering the basics with regards to the acceptance letter and as well as the financial letter. I think uh, the process up to receiving the acceptance letter, you guys have already done that and it's quite straightforward. And uh, the acceptance letter also says that you have time till the 1st of June to basically give the confirmation statement. Uh, yes, as per the legal terms, you definitely have up until 1st of June to 2023 to give your uh, confirmation. However, the reason that you have to do is as soon as possible is because of the housing crisis that is there. Uh, we will explain, I mean, I will uh, get into that, but let's say that you do decide to come to TU Delft and you do send in your confirmation letter. The next step is to basically get the financial letter. What is the average time to receive the financial letter? Usually it is within a matter of a couple of working days. That is, let's say two to five working days. But as the season progresses, more and more people would want to gain, uh, let's say, access to the housing portal and more and more people decide, okay, this is what I want to do and this is where I want to be. So there is a huge barrage of information as well as a huge barrage of acceptances that go to the university office. And that is why towards May, uh, towards the end of April or even in June, um, there is a delay in receiving the financial letter and the time can go all the way up to, let's say, at least 10 working days. So keep this in mind before you actually take the decision to, let's say, you know, give your you know uh, acceptance or to TU Delft itself. The next one is, let's say, the fee payment deadline. This is something that is absolutely crucial and basically defines everything that happens after you set the ball in, uh, in motion. Officially, the fee payment deadline will be written on the financial letter. And it, the financial letter contains details as to what will be the tuition fees that you need to pay. Uh, and also the living cost deposit that needs to be paid in order to gain access to your visa. I will get into uh, more information about what the living costs essentially are, but let's just focus on the deadline for now. So the financial letter will also say that, hey, you have first till the a time till the 1st of July 2023 in order to pay the fees. However, uh, if you, when giving the confirmation statement, they, they do ask you that you have to, do you want to gain access to, let's say, the housing uh, service that is provided by TU Delft through this company called Duo? Uh, you either choose to say yes or no. And personally, and as well as ISA's recommendation would be to please select yes. Primarily because it is very difficult to search for housing, uh, especially when you're sitting a complete continent uh, away. So let's say you are working in Mumbai and you want to search for a house in, let's say, Pune or Bangalore. That itself is a huge ordeal. Can you try? Can you imagine how difficult it must be to actually search for private accommodation, especially when you're, you know, 8,000 kilometers away? So this is just me trying to put it to put perspective. So as far as possible, it would be better if you guys would choose for the housing service that is offered by Do. To clarify over here, if you do not get access to the portal, let's say, because the housing has been completely, uh, you know, finished, then the fees that you have paid for the housing portal will be refunded to you. Okay. But if you still gain access to the housing portal and you open the portal and you do decide, okay, this is, I'm not liking any of the houses over here. And let's say you do decide to do your own thing. In that case, you will not receive a refund. So the differentiating factor is basically whether you access the portal or you don't access the portal. 
all right and there's a lot be there's a lot of discussion that has been going around whether or not uh, what would be an ideal date as to uh, you know to guarantee that you get access to housing this varies from year to year i graduated in 2021 so i started in 2019 uh, during my year the housing portal closed or finished up the houses that were available on the 16th of may but what i have been hearing is that date has been moving sooner and sooner or coming up earlier and earlier so to be on the safer side it would be the best if all your fees uh, were in order and paid by the april 3rd week yeah just to be on the safer side and to guarantee that you have access to the housing pool ah so last year uh, it was 6th of may so you can imagine that this is a massive difference that has been happening and it is what it is this is something that is not exactly outside of our control and you could look at it in two different ways this is basically because the popularity of tu debt is becoming more and more with the international community and that is one of the reasons that you know a lot of students are basically being accepted and want to come to that yeah uh, the next point is basically funding uh, personal funds obviously this is i think uh, pretty straightforward so if you feel that you have the capacity to basically have personal funding through friends or a family or your own personal funds go ahead do it definitely but i think there will be a definite a certain fraction of people who would be relying on educational loans and um if you want to get a bis personal i say yes i did rely on an educational loan but the process is very lengthy so it would be very nice if you could basically start the process well in advance get all your matters in order if you are relying on your parents then basically their income tax returns have to be in order up to date completely and that has that forms the basis for getting a loan then there are two different types of loans i'm going to be very brief over here there's a collateralized loans and those are ones that are not backed by a collateral so collateralized loans are normally means when you have a mortgage against a fixed asset such as a house such as a shop or maybe you have a bank fd that is worth let's say 50 60 lakhs and you basically you can take a loan against that those normally tend to offer lower interest rates and lower interest rates are obviously going to be your friend when you re do restart paying that loan but when you go for non collateralized loans uh those are tend to basically offer loans to people who don't have such large quantities of fixed assets or basically don't want to pledge their assets against a loan you know it can depend like for example if the, it's the only house that you are living in you don't want to mortgage that against uh, an education loan it's a different philosophy that you would have uh so those are non collateralized loans and they normally tend to offer a higher percentage of interest rates so this is something that you, it's a very personal choice that you have to make and it is up to you to decide my advice would be if you are going for an educational loan try to stick to fixed rates and not floating interest rates because the economic um uh, uh what is that the perspective or the outflow that is happening over the next couple of years we cannot exactly predict it and if there the rates are floating yeah in times where the economic uh, rates are very good you can definitely benefit from it but at the same time uh for example in the current times the rates are very high so in that point of time you will basically be at a loss so this is a very brief on educational loans we can definitely talk about it at a much later stage and if you want you can uh, reach out to me too uh tuition fees and housing this is something that has been spoken about but your tuition fees uh, along with the living cost have to be paid on a certain date the living costs that you have they are basically taken as a deposit uh since you are an international student that is coming to delft in order to apply for your resident permit or your visa it is basically taken as a proof of uh deposit saying that you know you don't have to work essentially to to support yourself yeah because the legal amount that you can work for which is 16 hours per week on your student visa i don't think that is sufficient enough to basically allow you to completely sustain yourself yeah because by completely sustain yourself by that i mean it is not sufficient to pay your tuition fees and also cover your living costs such as pay your rent and eat your food and let's say your leisurely activities it can help in easing the living situation over here but it can definitely not cover the entire amount because at the end of the day it is a part time job uh the withdrawal date is naturally 31st of august 2023 and a lot of people have also asked on the admins group whether or not uh, a refund is possible definitely a refund for your tuition fees is possible but the refund for the visa fees and let's say the duo housing fees uh, they are, uh, you know those would those will not be refundable um and the one good thing about tu delft is they might be taking money from you but they are absolutely bloody transparent about it yeah so they will not try to cheat you out of anything they will specify how much money they are taking from you 
and uh, that is the exact amount of refund that you are going to get yeah so please don't be worried if your situation changes say that you get an admit from a better college you decide to let's say continue with your job and not start masters this year for whatever reason if you have any personal reason you don't want to start your masters you will get a refund but that is something that has to be initiated by you and you will have to get in touch with the admissions office and stuff like that yeah uh, yeah okay okay just one thing that i want to clarify is there is a q and a session but firstly due to the interest of time we want to focus only on the questions that have been submitted in the google sheets that were being circulated and if we do have more time left in the session then definitely we will you know uh, open the floor for just like uh, on the spot questions so don't worry about that and this is not the only webinar that we will be having we are recording this and we will also have uh, let's say bi monthly or bi weekly the way you want to call it webinars so that um, we want to walk with you through the entire timeline that exists from let's say receiving your acceptance letter all the way to actually coming to dell yeah so today like maitri said we are just going to focus on the fee payment the tuition fees housing and that's it so we will come to the visa and everything probably in our subsequent uh, webinars next slide living i will cover this yeah yeah okay so the housing situation uh, yes that is quite tricky the netherlands and delft in general is actually uh, quite a beautiful place it does grow on you but however the weather absolutely yeah it's not that good uh, for lack of a better word uh, so definitely come prepared for that however the housing service that is offered by the university is through an external agency called duo and the houses are in good condition you don't have to worry about let's say your safety they are often in a very good locality also so you don't have to like uh, you know worry that something bad is going to happen to you uh in general there are no cleaning services that are essentially provided so you are going to be responsible along with your flatmates to basically maintain the common areas your own room as well as let's say the bathroom the kitchen and the toilet that is there so many of us might not have basically done this when we were back home living by with us uh, by ourselves or even with our parents because it is very easy to get access to let's say domestic help in india but i think you have to mentally prepare for yourself prepare yourself that you will have to do these things by yourself over here so please keep that in mind there are quite a few number of student accommodations that are available through duo there are three different kinds essentially if i uh, want to categorize them in a very broad manner the first one is obviously a studio what do i mean by studio you will have your own room you will have your own kitchen and you will have your own bathroom and toilet so it's basically an entirely self contained accommodation uh there are pros and cons to each type or each category of accommodation primarily because i feel some people really enjoy or value their personal space so a studio would be the best option for them but there are some people that really like no cannot stay alone and would want to mingle and at least have some human presence around especially after covid and stuff like that that is something that i prefer so studios might not be for you and but studios are in high demand so i think if this is something that you really want pay your fees as soon as possible so that you are at first in line to get access to the portal number 2 is something like prof s uh, which is basically you have a shared kitchen which is quite large and you will share a kitchen with let's say 5 to 6 other people so it's not like you will share one kitchen with the entire building of people but you will have your own room and uh, you will have eight people okay sorry you will share in profess you share the kitchen with eight other people not five to six nevertheless i think it's uh, the each induction has four tops and then four times two right so total eight of them yes so it's not like uh, you know you'll have to wait in line to cook or something like that it's quite spacious however the cleanliness of that kitchen completely depends upon the flatmates that you're staying with and you will have to have a cleaning schedule to maintain the cleaning uh, common areas but the advantage of profess is you will have your own bathroom and toilet and naturally you have your own room and finally the third category is basically where you have a shared kitchen as well as a shared bathroom and toilet i think van hasetland is similar to that so and the only privacy that you have list start is also that way. i think caesar frank caesar, start, caesar frank start is also that way yeah, yeah. and uh, so in this case yeah you'll be sharing the common areas the kitchen as well as the bathroom and the only private space that you have is basically your room and uh, yeah that is about it when it comes to student accommodation uh decide what is what is something that you really value 
and uh, there are different buildings that are there some of them are really close to the university some of them are quite like you no know, let's say maybe 10 15 minutes away cycling so sometimes you will have the choice to choose what you want sometimes you might end up like okay towards the fag end of the line and say that okay i i don't have a choice this is something that i'm getting and you will have to go for it personally uh, this is not coming from i say this is my personal advice if you are getting accommodation in delft jump at it take it do it all right because your first year is going to be quite challenging and it really helps if you are going to stay in delft because you don't want to spend a lot of time commuting and it's going to get cold in the winter you might not really be used to it it gets quite windy as well as it rains a lot so it's best if you stay in delft if you have the option to do that yeah uh private accommodation uh, i think as the name suggests basically uh, tu delft is not going to help you private accommodation in fact they have even said on their website that if you do not have access to student i mean you don't secure housing before you arrive in the netherlands then please rethink your decision of coming here as harsh and blunt as it sounds that is basically the dutch directness that you might have to get used to once you're here but it is what it is so what is private accommodation as the name suggests you basically have to start searching on facebook groups or let's say through your seniors or through some common friends who maybe came for masters before you and basically start searching for leads and there are quite a lot of facebook groups so if you just go on facebook and say like let's say delft housing tons of them will pop up send a request to basically be a part of them and you will basically essentially have to keep going through it again and again because the competition is absolutely fierce so if you notice if there is a house listing or a room listing rather that has been posted let's say 12 by 1201 there will be 12 other people that have already posted messages in the comments saying ki i have sent you a message please can i come for a viewing so the competition is extremely fierce and viewings is something people prefer doing it in person now that covid is over so you can imagine sitting extremely far away you will either have two options one is to request the person for a virtual viewing which normally is not preferred because literally i feel sometimes in the netherlands it is easier to get a job than get housing yeah uh, because people tend go to the extent in some houses that they often tend to take interviews because let's face it if you are going to stay with a person you would want to stay with a person that you can gel well with so that is why it becomes quite competitive so even if you are first in line it might not necessary that you get access to that of housing number 2 is you can also request let's say a senior or a friend who's doing their masters to basically you know take some time out of your day and go to the house on your behalf for the viewing this might work might not work because it completely depends upon how much time a person has available and let's face it once you come to delft you'll realize there's not a lot of time available for free activity in the first year itself yeah so i hope that's uh, as much as information okay. yeah sure sure i think sukhji wants to say something yeah so in terms of private housing we would suggest that don't stress about it right now at least till the time you officially get a email saying oh the housing is full then you can start panicking about private housing but we will uh, organize a webinar close to the date when the duo housing gets full and we will also share the links of all the private accommodations through which we found the house or we are aware of so in case you are looking for private accommodation we will help you through it but right now we will ask you to try and push for student accommodation yeah i th- and i think another point about private accommodation is uh like any service that is in demand there are you will be exposed to like a lot of scams so there have been a lot of cases where let's say people uh, let's say uh, yeah is one word of advice if something seems too good to be true it probably is especially in the case of housing in the netherlands so if you see like a really good house and uh, yeah if you see a really good house and if it is being offered for a very less rate then it's probably too good to be true be aware of such scams always try to send let's say these contracts or something like that if someone asks you to sign a contract without a viewing it is probably a scam yeah then um, if the account number does not have the word nl in it it's probably an account that is not based in the netherlands and most probably if it is somewhere outside the netherlands you might end up being a victim to the housing scams but like sukriti said we'll touch it much later yeah so cool yeah you can also earlier we spoke about uh, part time jobs and i remember when i was applying for it we usually take into account the fact that okay i'll come over here and then in next 3 months i will start working and sometimes we tend to like plan our financials i would say 
finances according to that that maybe till 3 months i need this much money and then i will start earning so i do not need that much money for it but uh, when you come over here things are really different and it actually takes you 3 months to like 6 months just to adjust to the place and uh, finding a part time yes you can find it but it takes time so if you are looking for part time in the university it will take time like i am in my second semester and i'm still looking for a part time and people get lucky with it they also find it in the first quarter but the first two quarters in the in itself are really hectic in terms of studies in terms of the environment and winters get really dark and lonely over here and it's it's a statement which i think all of us underestimated but it is really true and in winters it would be good if you do not take much load on yourself but in terms of part time whenever you're planning your finances uh keep into mind that you might not find a job for a part time for 6 months or maybe 8 months and if you plan your finances like that then you're not providing or like not causing a lot of pressure on yourself because when you're here you tend to pressurize yourself in terms of oh i'm spending this much on this or i'm spending this much where can i save and then you end up saving on things which you would normally want so just a point yeah i think uh, we've covered all our slides <laughs> pay your fees asap i think the crux of this whole thing was basically you pay your fees as soon as possible primarily because of the housing uh, and i i don't think there is anything else there is you don't really have to worry about the quality of education that you will be getting because uh, yeah there's a reason that you dev has good rankings and uh, if someone starts you know bragging about the rankings of us universities you don't have to worry about it because once you start your course you will re- realize there's quite a bit of academic rigor that is expected from you and uh, yeah that that is basically going to make you understand that you know these rankings don't really make sense so the only thing that i would say is you know just try to focus and push your fees as far as soon as possible yeah i think uh, we can move to the q and a now and uh, yeah we'll basically i'll stop yeah. the slide show cool no let me okay guys give us a moment we are going to go into the q and a and basically focus firstly since we have a lot quite a bit of time we'll first focus on the let's say the google sheets questions and i think i can already start maybe supriti just going to fix up the slides but uh, yeah i will start with the questions uh is it still being recorded i hope Yeah, it's recording. Okay. The first question that we got was basically, I'm writing to you to get more information about the student finance put forth by Duo. This Duo is D U O, which is different from the housing service. This is from the government of Netherlands. Uh, I wanted to know if I would be eligible for the student grants that are mentioned on the website before I need to pay the fees slash living costs as per the financial letter. When can Indians second number two point is when can Indians apply for these grants? um do i wait for the visa permit before applying any info on applications or if any facility to get in touch with indian alumni who has had experience with duo student grants okay uh firstly unfortunately we cannot as indians because we are not dutch nationals uh, apply to the grants that are available through this uh, organization 
so you cannot rely on them for let's say for it to helping you get a low interest student loan to you know facilitate your living cost and debt nothing of that sort however um in the event that let's say your thesis gets extended and you basically your time in tu delft goes beyond the 2 years because of extremely valid reasons let's say you have uh, you know you go through so something really personal let's say you know because of mental health or let's say physical health reasons reasons you cannot basically you know give your effectiveness to your degree then in those cases based on a doctor's uh, approval and then there's a entire committee which basically goes through your uh, you know appeal they will decide whether or not you know they can actually give you certain grants but under normal circumstances indians as non eu nationals or non dutch people we cannot get access to the duo grants so only in those extremely special circumstances can we get it yeah so i hope that answers the question the next one is my passport is expiring before the completion of my two year course what are the steps to renew it from the netherlands thanks um i think this is not nothing related to tu delft in general but i would say there are facilities to basically renew your passport you will have to go on the vfs global website and uh, through that basically you have to write an application that goes to the embassy of india and you don't have to worry about it uh, it is done but obviously i would say if you have the opportunity get it renewed when you're in india because uh, it costs like 1500 to 2000 rupees when you're in india and you get it if you already have a passport it gets renewed within a week yeah but if you're in the netherlands i think it is going to cost you upwards of 100 euros so that would be a personal advice but it's a pretty straightforward process if the embassy is way in, uh, right in the hague the vfs is also right in the hague so it's like a 7 8 minute train drive uh train ride and you don't have to worry about it my advice do it when you're in india okay then i think i can talk for in this okay i'm going to just start sharing the excel sheet okay so we are on the third question uh, third question when will scholarship results be declared are uh, the scholarship results depend upon which scholarship you are talking about but i think the main faculty based scholarship which is a full scholarship has already been declared and the first people who have received the scholarship have been contacted discreetly through the emails um yeah that was it transportation from delft uh i i i don't really understand this question entirely but i think you're meaning to say let's say transportation within delft let's say if you want to go from your student accommodation anywhere in delft to your university the transportation is basically you know you'll have to get a cycle because it's a the entire country is basically designed in such a manner that the cycling infrastructure is top notch so basically put those legs to use get uh, get a bit more fit and you will really enjoy cycling over here but if you want to go outside of delft naturally depending upon how far it is you will have to either uh, you know let's say go by train or tram or bus but delft is a super accessible town there's a high frequency of trains cabs or trams or buses whatever you want but naturally this comes under the gamut of uh, public transport and depending upon how you lo you look at it and what prices you are used to for some people it might be a bit expensive but yes you don't have to worry about let's say if you want to get to the airport in the middle of the night you will find something there are trains that go from delft straight away to the skipole airport how to get in the racing club uh this is again a very specific question there are quite a few uh i would say uh student uh, technical teams that focus on let's say racing there's the hydrogen team there's the formula 1 team and they have their own recruitment drives so when you get over here you will basically come across all these team members you will come across posters when they have their recruitment drives you can get in touch with them they will probably have like a coffee chat with you and uh, you know uh, they might have a technical and then depending upon how that goes you basically get into the racing club yeah how much salary to expect savings after tax deduction how long will it take to repay the money spent on two years of masters very interesting question i still haven't found the answer <laughs> but how much salary do you expect i would say the netherlands as a country it is uh, once you start earning it's extremely difficult to be poor it is extremely difficult to be uber rich yeah they they focus on having a good standard of living irrespective of the kind of let's say branch that you come from so if you're looking uh, i mean if there are non uh if if you are from a core branch of engineering let's say let's say mechanical civil and stuff like that i would say for in the netherlands your salary progression will be much better as compared to for the same amount of experience that you would have had in india but maybe if if you are from the it background uh you cannot compare the salaries that you'll be getting in europe 
uh, to the salaries that you'll be getting in the US. Yeah. So I think this is a question that is going to be asked, especially, and I think this IT salaries in India also are extremely quite high. So maybe they might be, even if you're on the higher end of uh, the earning spectrum in India, for IT people, the salary might be just 1.5 times that or two times that, you know, if you're a fresher. So um, normally for uh, right after your master's, depending upon the field that you're in, your average salary, starting salary can be between 2,700 to 3,500 gross. And uh, the net can be, well, the taxes over here are quite high, but naturally there is a lot of social security and uh, other access that you have can vary between, let's say, 2,400 to 2,800 to even 3,000, depending upon the company and the kind of gross salary that you start with. Yeah, so I hope that answers how much salary to expect savings after tax deduction. Yeah, savings is, I think, completely lifestyle uh, dependent. You know, if, if you stay in a shared accommodation, you're going to save a lot. If you stay in a studio and then you have like, uh, like you know, you like to travel, you like to do a lot of things and obviously things are quite expensive. So it's, it's up to you. But the net salary would vary anywhere between, let's say, I would even take it down all the way to 2200 if you're a PhD in the first year to all the way to 3000 net. This is obviously the, just the starting salary. The progression after that completely depends upon your performance and the kind of company that you're working in. How long will it take to repay the money spent in two years? Uh, I think the fees right now are around 20,000 euros. This is like 40,000 euros. You start off with a salary of around 35 to maybe 45,000 euros. Do the math. Maybe two, two to three years or maybe four years even. That, that would be the math. Um, best things about studying at Delft. This is a this is a very juicy question. I think I'll come back to it later. Everyone can pitch in. I don't want to take this. Yeah, I don't want to take this away from anyone. How early do we need to start looking for housing with classes beginning in September? On what platforms? How much would be the rent and living expenses per month? Yeah, we covered this. But just on the rent and the living expenses per month, uh, there's been a quite a lot of inflation in the last one year, primarily because of the Ukraine war and supply chain issues. And obviously companies being quite greedy. But uh, I would say for normal groceries, you would park your average. And if you end up cooking your own food, anywhere between 150 to 200 euros. Yeah, this is to be on the safer side of things. I have heard people like during my year, it used to be around 120 to 150. But now obviously during my year, during my year, that's why I said it is around 150 to 200 euros. But obviously I've heard stories where people, I've heard stories where people spend less than this where, and, and there are people who spend more than this. All right. So this is a, like a very average amount that I've said. Then what mode of transport is available for these housing to the campus? Like I said, cycling is the best one, but in certain cases, if let's say if you've broken a leg or something, and if it's raining heavily, yes, there are buses, there are trams, no issues. How can we connect with the current Indian students in a particular program to learn about the experience? Uh, I think LinkedIn is a very good platform. Uh, there are a lot of people. And if you also get in touch with us, we will try to create a database of existing alumni and current students who are part of those particular tracks. How much is Dutch required as a master's students in campus life and otherwise? I mean, the master's classes themselves are very international friendly. So I don't think, you know, you should have a problem with Dutch as such during your classes. But if you want to socialize, yes, I would say eh, maybe kind of like, you know, Dutch might be required, but it's not something, it's not a make or break thing. Yeah, I, I got through my master's without learning Dutch. I started learning it during my second year. I didn't face any issue. Don't worry about it. But I would definitely say as an international student, if you do learn Dutch and take up the courses that are available in the university as time permits, it will significantly improve your chances for like, you know, making good friends and connections, not just in their social, uh, social purview of your life, but also let's say in the, from the perspective of jobs and stuff. Even if it's broken Dutch, it's fine. They will appreciate that you made an effort. That counts, right? Just showing up counts. What's the per month cost of living around Delft? Rent is something that obviously depends upon the accommodation that you have. I think it should be anywhere between minimum 500 to it can go all the way to 650 now. Yeah. Uh, groceries, like I said, it's around 150 to 200, depending upon how you live. Uh, other utilities, other ut by other utilities, I think if you're talking about, let's say, water, gas, and electricity, most of the times it is included in the rent, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, yeah, that's about it. But then you have separate insurance and I think student insurance is around 55, 60 euros, 52. 50, yeah, 52 to 55 euros, depending upon the service provider that you have per month, by the way, 52 to 55 euros. Yeah. 
then uh, since many of the results arrived pretty late that is 28th of march 2023 and it gives 10 days approximately to reflect in the account would that pose as a problem for people who received sorry uh, admits this one sec admits late and consequently will face issue with the housing i don't think that will face an issue i think tu dev has started doing this because earlier they used to start sending admits way back in january february and everything but they have started doing this with a lot of branches it is not going to uh, create a problem for you guys as long as you pay the fees on time because even if it takes time to reflect in their account they will take into perspective the date that your bank has processed the payment yeah so if you say i have paid on april 1st and on the portal it reflects on the 15th of april they will still take into account that your bank had sent the payment on the 1st of april so that's not going to be an issue what is the roi on getting a masters degree on tu dev this is a very subjective question what would you define roi as getting in a broad experience getting the, the money uh, the roi on the in perspective of the money or roi in perspective of the skill set that you acquire yeah uh are on the perspective of money naturally it is decent to good depending upon where you end up after your masters um i will not say great because naturally there 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 exists a comparison with salaries that you get in the us so this is a very personal question what is it to you that you value in life from the social security perspective and from the perspective of let's say if you would want to settle in the netherlands i would definitely say that perspective is fucking great uh excuse my language primarily because um very international friendly country uh you can get away with knowing just english to an extent uh naturalization happens over a period of just 5 years so you don't have to wait for a very long amount of time to get a green card or something like that your visa status uh after your masters to get a job you get something known as a zookyar visa visa or a searcher visa so that literally gives you one year as opposed to 3 months to search for a job uh so i think that those are the heavy positives so and in terms of the education fantastic i i would say i was never confident as an engineer after graduating from my bachelors but now i see like give me a problem i will solve it you know that is what you dev makes you capable of definitely can pay the visa and housing applic- application fee first and the remaining fee after i receive my visa no that is not possible uh i have been admitted into the msc applied sciences uh i have received holland scholarship worth 15000 euros since hs is awarded for the first academic year how do i second year okay this is something that is a personal question again i i don't think um handling second year expenses is something that you know we can basically answer you will either have to rely on a part time job personal funds or through a basically a loan yeah or yeah the university as such will not offer any sort of funding or aid no i think that's a department funding yeah clarity about the housing platform where to get acquainted with the platform so the search process goes smoother furnished versus unfurnished places which localities should we search for good housing the localities search for good housing i don't think you need to worry about that like you don't have to worry about random gun shootings happening and you know uh maybe you can if you want so i think this is in terms of private accommodation which we will talk about later but i would say whatever you get wherever you get you take it <laughs> that is what i would say so furnished unfurnished uh just take it and you can always furnish it but uh the process the search process we will tell you all about it later so you don't have to worry about it yeah uh yeah for sukriti covered that the holland scholarship website says the results will be published end of march and uh, may 2020 it's an ongoing process can anyone clarify whether the scholarships have been granted and how many are left any specific scholarship for indians uh i think if the scholarships have been awarded and they are in the process they will definitely inform you isa is not any in any way related to the holland scholarship people so this is this is something that we cannot answer like you know how many are left or something that is something that we cannot answer any specific scholarships for indians i think this is also a very subjective question because it completely depends let's say you can get get scholarships from india itself right so i, I know for a fact that if you are from andhra pradesh the state government has extensive amounts of scholarships and grants that are available for students so maybe you could look into that personally i'm from goa so the goa government does have let's say a scholarship that is available for people going for higher education so you could look into that uh yeah so i, I think even west bengal might have i don't know a lot uh, other states but definitely it works on a case by case basis but within the netherlands 
there's nothing as specific let's say something like that the indian embassy does no uh, we don't uh, have those scholarships unfortunately can someone elaborate on the duo platform for student finance i think this has been covered it is not possible to get a student loan basically through the duo finance um are there any affordable student accommodation available near to you there uh, affordable is subjective but i think yes if you get access to the housing you will get uh, you know decent student accommodation i cannot say affordable that is uh, subjective i have a few questions university accommodation experience and food situation accommodation experience don't have to worry about it completely depends upon you and your flatmates on how clean you clean keep it and how well you guys gel with each other food situation uh yeah okay exactly research and internship opportunities uh extremely good don't worry about that uh exam and workload uh we will cover this we will cover this okay how does the insurance thing work uh uh yeah student insurance so basically uh if you are going to live legally in the netherlands you are required to have a student health insurance there is no way about it and yeah basically just opt for one of the providers or service providers that you know the university recommends it's fine there is a lot of recommendation from certain people that say that you can get student insurance from india itself uh i would say that is up to you do not rely on someone else to make that decision for you because let's say in the event god forbid that happens in the event that you actually have to utilize your insurance and you cannot get in touch with an insurance provider in india well you're in trouble yeah because the costs are exorbitant in terms of the healthcare over here so it is always good to have easily accessible insurance and service providers over here so my recommendation i know it's 50 52 euros per month but you won't even be thinking about it when you'll be drowning in assignments cool then how should we find a house if we don't get through the university process we will cover this what is the placement process ah uh, there's no such formal placement process as is uh, experience in indian colleges the way let's say jobs work over here is basically you have to reach out to your network through job portals through linkedin through indeed uh through career fairs and there are a lot of events for networking that are normally organized now that covid is over um yeah this is how basically getting a job works and a lot of companies basically post up their jobs on linkedin as well as through their own job portals uh, that is so there's no fl- formal placement process yes also in terms of like summer internships or internships or jobs uh, i tu delft uh, also have like various uh, business fairs where a lot of companies come in and they put up the put up a stall kind of a thing where you can network and you can make contacts and then apply for two places uh the next question was do we have to do a summer internship i think this completely depends upon the kind of uh, the uh, the department that you're in and the track requirements that you have yeah because some, um, some for some of them it is mandatory for some of them if you have job experience they will waive off that requirement i would say it depends upon the faculty that you are in i have paid immediately after the admit can i rely on student housing it depends on when that immediately happened yeah so i don't have the complete data to answer this question but let's say if you got your payment i mean financial letter on the 31st of march and you paid today yes i can say you can rely on duo housing how does the scholarship process work now that i have got an admit i am am i eligible for scholarship uh, approximately when will the scholarships be awarded if you've been awarded the scholarship you uh, you will be contacted by the respective authority for that can we find studio apartment through the delft housing portal yes if we have to share will we able to choose our roommate technically i mean ideally no it's a random allotment that happens but let's say in the situation that you know someone and you have a friend that is also applying with you and they gain access at the same time as you then maybe you guys can juggle around and do fastest fingers first and get the same housing but i mean that's a gamble right but take it from me you're coming 8000 kilometers away keep your mind open like you know it's time that you completely go beyond your comfort zone and make friends with new people yeah that's the way that you will end up getting a job probably like from a person who you don't even know then uh, are the student accommodation for 2 years or 1 year i think this is a very valid question the duo accommodation that you get is for 2 years and uh, so you will have to vacate it and sometimes at the end of july in the second year or sometimes at the end of august depending upon the housing that you've gotten and um, so it is always advantages to have student accommodation primarily because it saves you the headache of you know finding private accommodation in the first two years you don't want to get into that 
how to pay the next question how to pay the university fee if there is uh, any different procedure for overseas bank transfer as ifsc code and other details it's not the same as indian banks and can you explain what is iban and bic number mentioned in the financial letter okay so there is something the iban is basically your account number uh, the account number is basically the account number that you'll be transferring the money to this is something that is common across the entire european economic area the bic number or the swift number is kind of like the ifsc code that we have in india so every bank has an address to it and that is what the bic number or the swift number is yeah so these are the two numbers that are very important so you have the account number which is the iban and then the bic number which is the swift code or technically like the address or the ifsc code for the banks in the netherlands yeah uh, i hope i answered that question and uh, yeah there are going to be a lot of questions as to how do we pay the fees uh, the way i did it was basically through sbi and you have to fill a form you have to have sufficient funds and then they, they do the bank transfer some people recommend wise and stuff like that uh, yeah i would say it's a personal choice if you want to do that you can do that but it's always better to do such things from a well reputed organization because it is a lot of money that you'll be transferring if something goes wrong it's always better to help, you know hold someone accountable than take the blame on by just doing it on a random apps if it was you know 1 or 200 euros i would be like you know say like it's fine but it's 20000 euros plus the living cost that you'll be transferring so that's a lot of money which are the best studios at tu dept campus like which are the most sought after buildings for accommodation and which buildings have common area to interact with people i am not eligible to answer this question if someone has wants to tackle this please do i haven't stayed in duo myself that's why does someone else want to answer okay. yeah vignesh you can can uh, there are certain uh, studios over in tu dept specifically speaking uh, there are profess is it's kind of studio but uh, the thing is like you have a kitchen alone uh, as a common thing but most of them like uh, the shared rooms are also appeal like uh, studios only but the thing is like you only have kitchen separately so there are few uh, accommodation which are uh, having uh, studios are uh, profess van hassel and uh, x ray so phoenix start yeah phoenix start these are the few uh, studios that are available the best part of this today is like you get a uh, a discount i mean sorry the subsidy from the gmt like uh, student, allowance. student allowances so it's quite uh, cover your almost rent so let's say the x ray is renting 600 euros and you get the refund back of 200 so almost 400 is your rent so and another thing like the maintenance of your studio room is like completely on your your own relying so you should only clean your room so no one uh, is from the duo or any from other uh, contract people doesn't clean your rooms so you should do it by yourself Uh, so washing machines and uh, the other right. kind of stuff has it depends upon which uh, housing you are living so profess and uh, kind of other duo buildings usually have their own uh, separate uh, uh, laundry room called it has both the washing machine and dryer so you have a separate portal where you pay and you have a qr code based on that you can uh, do your washing a uh, few other uh, places uh, has wa- drying and washing on their home itself they don't want to pay and let's attend this so uh, in terms when the portal opens up and uh, when you are supposed to look for or choose a housing so if you are confused as to which house should you choose in terms of student accommodation maybe profess or xray then i would suggest that you should look at the location so try finding the place which is closest to your department life becomes way easier so you can just put google maps just your location and the location of the housing which is the closest and then choose but x-ray is one of the best ones which we have so if you have a spot in x-ray close your eyes and just take it so uh, x-ray so duo has this uh, certain thing that only a few buildings are for uh, certain people who get their admits so it's like in in one building you'll have more most indian students in that building or maybe a few a few other country students so xray is something which is uh, mainly european uh, building but if you have uh, eligibility to get the uh, to get the room in that building there are chances that you'll be getting the accommodation over there but the chances are really low if you really want uh, a an accommodation closer to the university 
there is a mdr michael deo's work and uh, professor sharman strat these two la uh, yeah and league water strat so these three are the buildings which you would want to go to as your first preferences and at the same time it's like uh, if you want good and if you uh, if you want uh, if you want to spend a little more but live in a better building it's like you have the student hotel which is uh, eshh and it is closer to the university and one more is phoenix rat which are studios but you'll have to spend a little more on the rent and excluding that we would we would really advise you all to go uh, with paying your fee as soon as possible and getting a room which is preferable uh, preferably closer to your uh, department in the university and all but it's it's better until you get a room that is that is more than enough uh, it's you have to only worry if you don't get it on the duo that's all and if you are kind of understanding that you're not going to get a duo accommodation it's prefer, uh, it's better to start searching houses for yourself but don't worry about it until you get an email that we are not providing the university page will have good information about you getting an accommodation through duo so it's okay uh, have your patience go through the process and then we'll we'll anyway be there we'll be having a, you, you can contact us through the website and through the group as well so don't worry about that Yes. Okay so yeah I think we are done with the questions from the excel sheet but there are some questions from the Q&A that is being uh, present on the zoom facility so one question is if one has plans to come back to india given the fact that one has a loan how feasible is it to work two years sorry i'm guessing to to your study and then to to work and return what is your take on this depending upon the loan that you guys have uh, it would be very difficult to answer i mean if you have like a loan of let's say 5 to 10 lakh rupees i would say it's very easy to clear it in one year once you start working if you have 20 lakhs if you live very frugally then maybe you can clear it off in two years but anything more than that i don't think it is possible to clear it in two years considering the fact that the cost of living is also quite high in the netherlands and let's face it after two years of studying you would also want to relax for a while so i don't think all the money that you will be saving you need to have also have savings for emergencies and everything so depending upon the amount of loan that you have i this it is possible to return in two years if that is what you want uh but yeah i would say maybe maximum 15 20 lakhs within two years not more than that next question was uh uk offers one year program whereas netherlands has a two year program and if you have plans to come back to india how important is it to have a two year degree apart from teaching and what if we have a one year degree plus two years of work experience at uk then what is the advantage of this over that uh, yeah please go ahead so it depends on the course you're looking for but when i was applying i was also comparing uk and uh, netherlands but uh, since i am from a design background uh, the degree doesn't really matter that much in india but it's always better to have like a masters degree than have like a one year diploma which you, uk usually gives you but uh, in terms of uh, uk and tud education tud tud education is a uh, considered to be more intense and is valued more in india because it is an M msc degree and i'm not sure if uk offers you an msc degree it might be an ma or something else which you're looking at so it completely depends on the course which you're going for as well yeah and i think the last question and then we can get onto the general thing yeah uh since uk universities have accreditations for every course how does this how does the this how does this work for here and how important is it to have that recognition if i want to work in the europe or uk if you have graduated from tu delft you can work anywhere in the world don't worry about accreditation yeah uh there's an important ceremony i need to attend but which is unfortunately on the 8th of september and the semester starts on the 4th so what are the cons and issues i would face coming late and wanted to know if it is allowed it is definitely allowed there is no attendance system over here so you cannot attend all the classes and just register for the exams and show up for the exam but i would say you will completely miss out on the introduction program that is organized by the university and i would say two weeks are very crucial primarily because you will get to know the university and you won't have any or study to studies to be worried about so and you will make friends you know at that point of time so it's a very nice chill atmosphere to experience what delft is what the university has to offer 
So that is a primary major con that you will basically face. I think that that's about it. Yeah. So you are allowed to do it, but that's the only con. And I think now we are going to go to the general stuff. Sukriti, take over. So also we have something called as IP, which is a uh, introduction period, which is usually way before uh, the session starts. So this year the dates for IP is sixteenth, fourteenth August. So that is one week of just activities and going around the campus and getting to know people, which is held, and they will take you around to UD, to UD Delft, Delft also, and. Uh, they'll introduce you to everything basically so that is one week and then in september when you have you have your course specific introduction so ip is like university it's for the entire university you will meet everyone across all the courses and all the departments but when your semester starts which will be in september then the first 3 4 days is introduction about your courses about your department and all of that which is really good to attend but yes uh if we do not have any more questions then we will quickly share our experience with you and niveda will talk about food and then we'll have other board members talk about something and then we'll close the webinar uh yeah so regarding food the first thing that i would suggest is to yeah sorry yeah okay i think this side i won't be this will only yeah okay so uh, regarding food uh, i would say the first thing is to learn how to cook because uh, the restaurants here you can get a lot of uh, indian food as well but it'll be little expensive so at least the basics of cooking you will need it when you are here and uh, regarding the things that you would need to cook uh, there are a lot of indian uh, like uh, shops as well so you can get all the ingredients that you would need to cook um but uh with regard to vegetables and stuff you you won't get the same things that you get in india so you will have to do a lot of trial and error and learn how to like cook and see whatever you like uh but yeah uh but you do have a lot of indian restaurants and you can like um get the food that you get in india but it'll just be a little expensive so yeah sukriti um who's going to Maitri will go next. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just saw one more question. Would you recommend coming before the introductory period or just before the start of class in September? So, if you ask me, I would suggest you to come for the introductory program because in the introductory program they'll give you a campus tour and you'll get acquainted with the campus, the whole situation of how it's to live in Delft, and uh, you uh, get to uh, buy a bike. Then bike man uh, means I mean a cycle. You get to buy a cycle at that time. So that two weeks is very are like very crucial to get used to the city. because once the classes start it will be very hectic to go around the city or know something else uh apart from that uh, if you ask me as uh, nevi said it would be like uh, really helpful if you know how to cook so right now go to your mom and tell her that okay now i want to learn some cooking and learn uh, basic uh, tips and tricks on how to cook and everything uh, you might feel a little homesick after coming here but that will be like only for a uh, few weeks and uh, isa is there for you will be always guiding you if you have any doubts the group will be still active after you come here we still use the groups from 2021 22 and so everything will be super fine so right now uh, try focusing on uh, paying the fee as soon as possible and if you have any doubts regarding any specific courses or if you want to talk to any of the senior as ved already mentioned linkedin is the best place to go and also you join the tu delft uh, like isa group where in you can uh, put up a message saying that hey i am from so and so if there is any senior from so and so branch uh, please connect with me or yeah, people will connect with you and you can talk so that's from my side and uh, yeah my three okay so we had a question about uh, workload in design for interaction specifically uh and uh, i would say that since you are coming in august the first quarter is not that hectic the first two quarters that is the first semester 
uh, you have a combination you don't have group projects actually in the first semester and it's all individual work but uh, it is manageable it will take some time but it is manageable and in the second semester it's way hectic and you have only group projects and upon that you have individual work as well but uh, you have to keep in mind that uh, over here the system does not work like okay if the deadline is on tuesday i'll work on monday it took me some time to learn that and i <laughs> i didn't learn it in a good way so if the deadline is on a tuesday then you should start working if it says that you need to put in 4 hours into a subject you have to put in 4 hours or more less than that will not do and uh, time management is very important for dfi that is very very important but yeah we'll continue with the experiences okay so i'll uh, just talk about the travel in uh, netherlands so basically the netherlands is completely too, sh too short so it's easy to travel uh, wherever you want it like there is a lot of transport uh, stations here train tram and uh, sprinter and also it's uh, it's very easy like uh, in the radius of 5 km you can almost uh, go by bicycles so it's quite easy for you to travel everywhere and i would say best part in netherlands is the cycling so yeah, it's good and uh, the the current situation in uh, netherlands is quite uh, different because there is a new rule is come from july for international driving license uh, it's quite obviously new for us also and uh, we are hoping it doesn't come so yeah, <laughs> i think the travel thing the license things was, was an april fool prank guys so sorry we we'll, we will confirm and we'll get back to you on that but uh, we are not sure of it as of now we are not sure of it yes also we have one question about uh, what is the situation in delft or netherlands regarding the effects of ukraine russia problem only uh, the only effect you will be able to see is uh, the gas prices going up a lot mm -hmm. so uh, the gas prices uh, they keep going down and they keep going up and usually it's up because of the war but apart from that you won't see any effects yes uh, maitri is going to talk now yeah hi uh, so in terms of uh, living in the netherlands uh, that is another thing that you're going to get a refund from the university for your own living expenses but it's additionally uh, recommended that you have your own forexes as well for you uh, for your initial days to be able to spend around in netherlands uh, because unlike the other european countries they don't exactly function that much on cash uh, so you'll always need to have a card on you so uh, it'll be easier for you to uh, make transactions around here or at least with your initial uh, buyings that you'll have to do after you come to the netherlands also in terms of uh, like living around in here um, apart from the like it's is just a process of you getting adjusted to the constant change in weather in here because uh, immediately when you come it's almost like a, it's summer and it's very pleasant it's really nice to adjust that way but then uh, as the time passes and it will be winters you will have to really uh, keep in mind the like how the wind in the in the netherlands can get so worse and it's basically always raining and for the people who are not that uh, accustomed for rains being there all the time this is something that we have to be prepared for and always have like rain jackets on you and some um, maybe branching requirements that we'll have to take care of and be prepared with and yeah that's about living in the netherlands so far uh let me take over real quick uh, there is one question which uh, is repeating which says that uh, how do we begin applying for visa which i have seen a lot the thing is uh, you don't have to do anything from your side to get a visa you just have to pay the fee and uh, fill the form sent by tu del uh and uh, the visa will be approved and you will only have to go to one of the Uh, consulates of like embassy of netherlands uh, either in mumbai or delhi or any other place uh, recommended by them to go and give your biometric 
so the living expenses the 12000 euros which they are taking from you additionally is the proof that you can sustain uh, life in your life in delft without working as mentioned earlier for one year it's for one year and the second year you won't be required uh, you won't be have to paying uh, the 12000 euros again uh, and uh, one more question is uh, when will the amount be refunded so as soon as you open your bank account uh, the money will be refunded by the first week of october to the second week of october so it varies from year to year it's basically that's the timeline hope i answered all the questions uh, there was also another question about uh, which bank is better for an account yeah which bank is best op best to open after you get to the netherlands there are two bank uh, that is suggested for us to open a bank account with that is one one of it is ing another one's ab and amro uh, both of it has its own uh, pros and cons and depending on how you are going to um, how you want to function along with taking into account both of their benefits you can uh, sign up for either either one of these banks i think so adding to that like uh... ABN Amro will uh, communicate through English and ING makes the communication through the Dutch. So most students prefer ABN Amro. Yeah, and uh, before closing the webinar, so there are two important platforms where we keep updating things very regularly. And if you reach out to us over there, we will be quick with our responses. So one is the WhatsApp group, which has been made for Indian ad there is a spelling error. I'm sorry about it. Indian Admins 2023. And uh, we will share the link on the chat right now. And also the link for our Instagram page. So you can follow us on Instagram. You'll also get to know more about us. What do we do? And if you have any questions, you can ask us over there. But uh, this is it for today's webinar. And thank you so much for joining. Thank you from the board of ISA. And we are looking forward for the next webinar and we hope that you will join us for the next one as well so thank you bye, -bye. bye. <laughs> thank you guys